So in this upcoming version, which is going to be released when you see this video, we have a few improvements on our way to version 1.0. I also want to talk a little bit about the timeline and things you can expect for now. First community contribution from Will Nations. He added this icon over here, so it's not a circle anymore like in previous one. So thank you for that. He also created a bunch of issues on GitHub, which I really appreciate because it helped me on improving Dialogic. For instance, we see now that the events are here now in this lower section instead of on the left. I also move the folding options here so you can fold and unfold by clicking here. Also the proximity of these buttons which are the events that you add over there. I think it's closer and it looks better. But let's go now with the new nodes. We can click here on new nodes and we have here the choice event and the end branch which will close this. I will explain this in a second. The if condition, which is empty for now in this video, but I will add more UI elements as I edit this and it should be on the version 0.5 and the end branch again to close the condition. The last one is the change timeline event, which you can select one of these timelines and you will go to them. So how do they work? Let's see here an example with a simple choice. We see here two characters joining, Toen and Emilia. The narrator says who should leave. And then you can start with a choice event. And whenever you close the choice and you start another one, that means that after this question that you add, these are going to be the options that the player will see. So they, get, they could either pick Emilia should leave or Toyn should leave. Character leave, let's make this correct. So Emilia should leave, let's select Emilia. Then Toyn says, you won't be missed. And now you can select a timeline to go to so let's go to the intro again. Then it closes this branch. That means that if they pick this, it will go until here. And whenever this finishes, it will go to the end. So this will be the event that they will go to when the option is over. If they picked Torn should leave, Kai can leave Torn, and then Emilio will say, I'm alone. It will go back to the intro and this will never happen. But in the case that you don't have this event here, it will continue executing like so. Hope this is not too confusing for you, but this is basically like having brackets in any language or the indentation. And a cool feature that you can see here is that I can drag and drop now the events. So you can move them whatever, whatever without doing it before on the version 0.4, you had to click here and move up or move down, but now you can click on the name of the event and you can reorganize it however you want. So let's see how the indentation works a little bit better in a more complex scene. You will see here that we have the choices and inside the choices, we also have the condition. What the condition event will do is check for a variable and the state of it to see if that's true or not. In this case, we have, if the player selects the option B, the narrator will say, so option B it is. Now, if you have a clearance, you will get to pick where to go next. Otherwise, you will go to the first timeline again. And we can see that as soon as all this ends, you will go to timeline intro, which is the first one. But if we have a variable here, which we can later on add on the glossary as a clearance and you give it to the player, it will check. And if they do have clearance, this will happen all this block until here which is a character will leave and a sound will play and then you will get to two choices where you want to go. And this is how you will do all the branching because I know all of you were asking about branches. This is how I plan on doing it. I don't think that your projects will look like this, especially because this has a lot of options all together in, instead of other options and stuff like that. I feel like visual novels or regular dialogues are more straightforward. And if you have a big options, you can deal that with changing timelines. So you can start branching using timelines. In this case, you can make it so that whenever they pick something, you change the timeline and you start another branch in there. But if you want to have it all in the same file, you can do it like this. They can be as big as you want. Now, if you notice, there's no timeline number four. This is how I named it, but we can add a new timeline. And the first thing you will greet it by is this warning, which I plan on implementing all over the plugin, which will guide you a little bit on what you should be doing step by step. In this case, when you have an empty timeline with nothing, it will tell you you should add a new event to start building your timeline. So whenever we add an event, 
the message will disappear. Another cool thing is that this timeline list that you have here is ordered alphabetically. So if you want to have them in order and you're doing anything, you can do now for missing timeline. And we have it there. It organizes automatically. You might have noticed that the color of the events are different. I'm trying to go with a color palette as explained on my previous video because I felt like the colors that I picked at the beginning were a little bit too random and these are more on the same style. And I want to remind all of you that this plugin is still under development. You will generate a readable JSON file that you can also, if you want to implement in your games with your current existing dialogues, but it's still not usable. So as for timeline, when do I want to make it usable? I want to finish some of the main events on version 6, which is going to be the next one. On version 7, I want to finish the basic version of the glossary. On version 8, I want to do the dialogue styling with a basic theme. It's going to be super, super minimalistic. I don't want to make it super complex at the beginning. That can come after version 1. And version 9 will include the node that you can add in your scenes that will generate the dialogue as you have it on the previous plugins that I made. And this is a small update on how Dialogic is going. I hope you guys are patient because it's taking me longer than I expected and also I've been really busy with work. But I think that I will be able to make more videos regularly. If you have any questions, leave it in the comments. Uh, remember that you can also join our Discord. And I would really like to thank my patrons again. Remember that the more patrons I have, the more time I can dedicate to work on this and also to help the Godot community grow. Thank you very, very, very much and see you guys on the next one.